friends, welcome. I'm glad you guys are tuning in for our Bible story this morning. I'm excited to worship with you in a minute. But we are learning this month, it's our last week, week five, of creativity. And creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. Which, I just want you to think for a second about being made in God's image. Because it is so amazing that God created everything. He created light and dark, sun, moon, stars, the ocean, all of the animals, all of the sea creatures. He created everything. But when he created us, he created us in his own image. That is wild. And one thing we know about God is that he's creative because, like we just said, he created everything. And if we're made in his image, then we're creative too. And so, as we finish up our study on creativity, I want you guys to be thinking in your own heads right now. Think, what am I good at? What kind of things did I get gifted with? Um, maybe it's art, because as we know, art is very creative. But there are a lot of things that you can be creative with that maybe you wouldn't think about, like um, math. You can be creative with math. You can fix problems with math. You can be creative when you read. You can be creative just by being kind and friendly to people. So, I want you to get creative and think about what you're good at and how you can use what you're good at to help others and to show God's love. Speaking of which, Showing God's love is a little bit about what we're talking about today. So we're going to go ahead and get into our story. I hope you guys have such a great time worshiping, and I will see you soon. Are you ready? I'm singing now. One, two, three, let's go. I was made to do amazing things. I know, I know.
What's up everybody, it's me, Jacob, and today we're getting creative with light. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. And God could tell you a thing or two about light. It was the first thing he created after all. Let there be light. Oh, no, too bright, too bright. Did you know that light can travel at 186,000 miles per second? If you were in a spaceship, it would take you three days to get to the moon. Light can travel to the moon in about a second. Fly me to the moon. Let me burp it in the stars. And never... You can use light in all kinds of creative ways. Not only can you make shadow puppets. <laughs> you need light to take pictures and make videos. This won't do at all. This is terrible lighting. Lights! No, no, down, down with the lights. No, too bright. Thank you. You can use lights to make a concert more exciting. You can even use light to communicate. S O S. Need help. I'm out of chocolate sad emoji i don't actually know morse code in today's story we're going to learn about another use for light in fact we're going to learn how you and me can be the light i can make a bee i can make a bee it's you gotta get the wings uh oh okay b i'm a bee bzz, bzz, bzz. See you in a few. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Kisa Jones tied the strings of a large white apron carefully behind her back. She glanced at awe at the gleaming silver countertops and appliances in the kitchen of a cupcakery where her brother Robert worked. This is amazing. Yeah, pretty great Maya's letting us use the mixer and stove. Pretty great, you're helping me. Keisha offered to bake cookies to raise funds for the new marching band uniforms. Even better, she convinced Robert to help her. He clipped the smudge recipe page over the counter. Brown butter and toffee chocolate chip cookies? Sounds weird. Trust me, they are the bomb. Robert worked evenings in a bakery for three years, so Keisha had to admit, he probably did know. She looked over the recipe. Two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt? Actually, we're quadrupling the recipe, so that's four teaspoons of salt. Robert tossed Keisha a set of measuring spoons. Cookies are supposed to be sweet. Won't the salt ruin them? Nope, salt actually brings out the flavors. What does that even mean? You want to test it out? Fine. I'll make a batch with salt. You make one without. You're on. The siblings worked quickly as Robert showed Keisha how to mix dry ingredients and wet ingredients separately. What do we do now? Add the dry ingredients into the wet mix on low speed. Slowly. Or you will make a flower storm all over this kitchen. I knew that. As Keisha worked, though she began to hear another sound over the mixer. Wow, rain's really coming down. Yeah, and this is such an old building that every time it storms, the power goes out. I can't see a thing. Robert fumbled with his phone until the flashlight came on. It always comes back on pretty fast. We can wait it out. Robert settled down on the floor, back against the cabinets. Keisha sighed and sat down too. She checked her phone. My battery's dying. Entertain me. What? You can't live without your phone? I don't know. Tell me a story. I was just thinking of one about salt. 
Really? One that Jesus told. Ooh, that one. Sermon on the Mount. Well, it fits. You know, the cookies. Fine. Read it to me, preacher man. It's in Matthew. I know that. Robert settled in with his Bible app. Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Then he began to teach. And pretty quick he gets into this part. You are the salt of the earth. That's it? Well, no. I mean, then Jesus talks about throwing out the salt if it loses its saltiness. How do you even know if you're salty? I think it's like the cookies. Salt makes things taste better. And people who follow Jesus can make life taste better. Mmm, like chocolate chip cookies. Robert punched her lightly in the shoulder. You know what I mean. When we share God's story, we bring hope to others. We help to fill their lives with kindness and joy and peace. All that good stuff. Okay, okay, I get it. Salt, good. There's something about light too, right? Yep. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Keisha shifted, trying to get comfortable on the hard floor. So when we follow Jesus... By showing God's love to others. When we do that, others can see God better and what to do. Like a bright light. Yikes! Robert leapt up to try to stop the mixer as the power came on. Keisha stood and stretched, blinking. Like a bright light. You planned that, huh? Of course. Well played. Hey, I'm going to put salt in my batch of cookies after all. Well played. As Keisha measured the salt, she smiled. The cookies would have came out great, but she had some thinking to do about ways she can become salt and light herself. Jesus said that I am a light. He said that you are a light and we should let our light shine so others can see it. And when we shine our lights, it will help point people to God. So how do we shine our lights? Well, we can give someone a helping hand. Oh, oh, oh goodness. Oh. We can cheer someone on. You can listen when someone else needs to talk. That's my ear. Listening. Only you can shine your light the way you can. So get creative. All you have to do is treat others the way Jesus did. Love people, serve people, and treat people like they matter. Then you'll be giving people a glimpse of God's story. You'll show people how much God loves them and how much they matter to him. Here's the one thing to remember today. God created you to share his story. Tell people with your words what God has done or use your actions to point people to him. No matter what, let your light shine. I know I'll never forget that. I'll see you next time. Oh, it's too bright. It's too bright. Ugh. Bye. Ugh. Okay. Just like Jesus told his disciples, you and me, we're created to be salt and light. We have purpose. And God created us to share his story. All right, come on, stand up. I don't know where you are. Maybe in your bedroom. Maybe you're in your living room. I don't know. But stand up, say it with me. Come on right now. Ready? Three, two, one. God created me to tell his story. Nice. Okay, so what are we going to do this week? We're gonna tell a story. We're gonna be salt and light. We're gonna use our purpose, our gifts. We're gonna be creative. We're gonna love people and shine bright the light that is Christ in us. So let me pray you out, and I'm excited to hear all about your creative ways that you're gonna love and show God's story this week. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being light in us. 
Thank you for showing us how to love so well. I pray that this week, every single student, God, every kid that's watching, every kid that's in person um, or at home in your living room learning this lesson, God, that they would be thinking of creative ways to use the gifts that you gave them, God. You created them so special and uniquely purposed to go out into their community and love well, to show um, your love well. And so I pray that they would shine bright with your light, that they would tell the world your story, Jesus, because you um, are perfect, you are wonderful, and you are hope. So, yes. May we have a wonderful week. In your name, amen. All right, guys, have a great week. Bye.